High availability uses a mechanism called a data store heartbeat as an additional way to validate if a host has truly failed or not. So let's take a look at our diagram here. And again, you can see we have four ESXi hosts, ESXi 01, 02, 03, 04. And they're all connected to a physical switch and they all have VMK0, which is our management VM kernel port. So all of the hosts can send heartbeats to each other. And so the master is going to send heartbeats to all the slaves and all of the slaves will send their heartbeats to the master. And as long as this continues to be the case, everything is fine. Let's assume that the management connection to ESXi04 is broken. Well, is ESXi04 actually down at this point? It's not. ESXi04 is still up and running. There's still virtual machines that are potentially working on that host. And maybe those VMs even have a network connection that's still up. All of our traffic might not flow through that physical switch at the bottom of the diagram. When that connection is broken, when that management network connection is broken, a few things will happen. The master host will try and ping ESXi04 and that will fail. The master host will then check on the data store heartbeat of ESXi04. And what I mean by the data store heartbeat is each of these hosts has a little file called the lock file that it maintains on shared storage. And as long as it maintains that file and that file remains locked by that host, the host must still be up and it must still have access to storage. So what the master is doing is it's saying, hey, can I open the lock file for ESXi04? If it can't, then it knows that ESXi04 is still maintaining a lock on that file and therefore the host is still up. So now the master host knows that ESXi04 isn't truly down, but that it's just isolated from the management network. So what happens in this scenario? This is considered a host isolation. So let's start by focusing on the master and slave hosts that have failed, right? Slave host ESXi04 has a broken management network connection. And at the moment, the only thing we know for sure is that ESXi04 can't connect to the management network. It might have other networks connected for virtual machines that are still up and running. And we know that the host can still access storage based on our data store heartbeat. So we may not want to do anything to ESXi04. We may want to just continue to allow it to run as is. The correct host isolation response really depends on your environment. What do you think is going on if the management network has failed? If the management network is down, are your virtual machines most likely down? Does it run on the same network as your virtual machine traffic? Right. Once you answer these questions about your environment, you can correctly choose the appropriate host isolation response. And you essentially have three options. What this slave host can do is number one, it can just leave the virtual machines running, right? The slave host will realize that it's isolated and it can either just leave those VMs running as is. Option two is host ESXi04 can shut down those virtual machines and they'll boot up on some other host. Or the final option is to just power off the VMs without a graceful shutdown and boot them up on other hosts. And all the virtual machines files are on shared storage, right? So if those VMs get powered off or shut down, another ESXi host is going to be able to reach out and boot those VMs up. So the correct decision to a host isolation event really depends on what the architecture of your environment looks like.